Hello and welcome back. This video, like so many others, starts with a big box. This box is brought to you by Tronxy, and in this box is another kit 3D printer. Uh, this is the X5S, um, the really big one. And I got this one from Gearbest and I'm hoping that it can to some degree replace one of my older printers which is currently not in the healthiest of states. So let's have a look what's in here. First of all there is some documentation. Which is kind of cool because the other Tronxies didn't have any. There is some filament PLA. That is like 50 grams or so. So good. We have some PTFE tube. We have a lot of wires. More wires. A USB cable. We've got tools. Oh, we got tools. Oh, I like tools. Um, in this bag of tools, you see some snips, some hex wrenches, uh, some screwdrivers, something that looks like an 8 and 10 millimeter uh, spanner. Yeah, that's it. We also have a power supply. Ooh, big and beefy. Ooh, it's got a switch. 110 volts and 220 volts. Right. Um, and it's got an on-off switch and it has power terminal power terminals. This is the improved version. Um, they had one where all the, the connections here were open and it was really dangerous. Um, well, this one still has some of the uh, vents here open with what I assume is primary side circuitry on the open but uh, it's, it's an improvement. There's a power cord there's a one piece of acrylic. Now that's it. That's the top layer. Oh no, there's more. There's more. There is... <laughs> um, this stuff that you're supposed to put in the profiles to make it look blue. There is... Oh, there's a cable chain. And the cables are already threaded. And it's a built platform, a heated bed built platform. Let's be really careful with that. There we go. So, ah, oh, there's some built tack like. It's somewhat light built up. There's a glass pane. Oh, that's plexiglass or or acrylic. Or it feels like it's kind of soft and it might be polycarbonate. That's also good. And we have this this heated build platform which apparently is a 300 millimeter heated platform it actually doesn't say what voltage kinda hard to say a lot of spludgy soldering on here uh, is not pretty, but 
nonetheless. Looks kind of nice. Let's get that out of the way. As well as this. There's more pieces of acrylic. Oh, and what's that? There is a USB to micro SD card adapter here, and it has a micro SD card in it. Would that be holding the build instructions? We're going to find out. But I suppose that's it for the top layer. Oh, there's also some screws in here. And ooh, more goodness. So what have we got? We have a controller board. Which looks funny. What's that chip on there? Could that be an F103? That's not that's not an Arduino Mega. This here is a This is an 80 Mega 128.4p. 1284p. I've not come across one of these before. Cool. Also, we have something with a fan, probably for the controller. We have some pre-assembled sliders, right, right, left, a lot of aluminium profile. We have steppers with stepper drive, with loose fit drivers on them. More pre-assembled things with bearings inside. We have a Tronxy direct drive, a uh, Bowden drive extruder. I'm sorry, Bowden drive. These these aren't bad at all. I, I like them. How is that in there? Huh. Oh, whatever. More steppers. Steppers. One, two, three, four, five steppers. We have, oh, we've got, we have an extruder with another cable chain pre-installed ooh ooh that looks nasty ooh that's not beautiful now what is this we have on a little turbo fan we've got a fan shroud 3d printed and well kind of wonky. We have a primary fan for the extruder, a limit switch, and this is one of those little extruders that was also present in the Tronxy X1, and that was quite a surprise. That worked really well. Let's see how well this one works. 
It doesn't doesn't look bad, but it's kind of kind of weird with that screw up here. So we've got lots of belt and lots of cable wrap. <laughs> a, wow, a real bag of screws. A lot of screws. We have a display board. So what is this? This here is, by the looks of it, wrap wrap, wrap, wrap discount, wrap wrap discount smart controller by Chonxi. It doesn't have the SD card on here. It has the SD card down on the controller. An encoder and a reset switch. And I think that's it. There's some more, some rubber feet, um, threaded nuts for the Z-axis, more acrylic. Acrylic parts. Not a lot of pe not a lot of parts for such a big printer. I'm kind of surprised. All right. So next part, putting it together. Looking at the parts that are in the box. Everything is really good. Um, the quality of the aluminium um, is okay. Uh, the cuts are very good. Uh, the holes that they drilled in here are, well, not that beautiful, but I suppose they will do. The instructions are simple, but good enough for anybody to get this thing built. Um, a little bit more complicated than for the X1 maybe, but that's okay. Uh, the screws and the tools and everything else that was included um, is absolutely up to par. The, the screws are um, in bags uh, for each size that you need. So all the M4s are in one bag, all the M3s in the other, and the M5s are in the next bag. Uh, the tools that are included, there's nothing wrong with them, there's nothing excellent about them, but that's exactly what you need to set up the printer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start building now, I won't be filming a lot, um, up to the point where we get to the critical parts like extruders, um, z-axis, uh, the belts and stuff like that. So I did run into an issue during the build and I thought I'd record this. Uh, these sliders here come pre-assembled and for a reason that I don't understand is um, the manual says there were supposed to be washers in here but um, they have these um, these lock nut uh, lock washers in here that are very springy and um, if you look in here uh, the bearings are a bit crooked because of that and um, I decided to remove these washers and uh, add some uh, 5.3 millimeter washers instead which makes the whole thing look and uh, move a lot nicer because you need way less tension on that 
to get this um, to get this together again and uh, the bearings are, are just so they're slightly slanted and they shouldn't be so I thought I'd mention that also the manuals states that these washers are supposed to be M6 uh, while this is clearly an M5 um, screw so let's just change this because now they line up perfectly and the bearings are are not crooked in any way I do have the feeling that some of these bearings are really really bad I wonder why well maybe they'll run in Now I did run into a problem while I was putting together the extruder holder and um, the moving the tool head uh, that the extruder is connected to. Um, the thing was that the manual tells you to have your belts all mounted uh, to the back plate, and that makes for a very for a very bad. Um, line of the drive belts uh, so I 3d printed this little adapter which moves one of the belts uh, forward which in turn makes it a lot easier to have a good line coming from the belts because one belt is coming from the front the other is coming from the back and if you connect them both to the same spot on the extruder uh, you're going to run into a problem that your belt line just isn't straight and going into the edges uh, you will have an error in the movement of the print head which is something that we don't want also I took the option to have all the belts uh, touch the gears with with not um, the, the teeth but the backside which meant that one of the belts um, is actually performing a half turn over the longest straight that it is going on um, which should be okay uh, there's not a lot of tension on there and um, this makes for a pretty good distribution of force so I'm pretty sure that that will work out fine I'm about 50% uh, through with the build um, it looks very nice I'm, I really like the concept uh, although these long uh, belts are kind of a problem when they have vibration or ringing or things like that but for a printer of this size that you want to be able to print reasonably fast I think it's a good trade-off it might work really well um, I'm starting to work on the print bed now and uh, that's quite a big one but so far everything has been going extremely well I did um, I did do the, the stepper mounts for the Z-axis and I found out that the, the steel that they used for the Z-axis rods is very very rigid and the these holders with the linear bearings um, there are actually two linear bearings in there um, with four uh, sets of ball insets in there each so this is surprisingly good quality for the price um, what I didn't like that much were the assemblies with with the bearings in here um, that had uh, the wrong washers but apart from that 
this is really good. Um, I really like the way it is done. I like the way they make use of quite a lot of the space. So um, I'll continue the build, but so far no issues whatsoever and everything just comes together really well. I've now put together most of the electronics and, uh, and the mounts for the electronic board, the display and uh, the back of the electronic board and of the electronic board and this is the first thing that is actually not perfect uh, because the electronics board and this fan assembly they just won't fit together the there's too much depth on on that fan and it's going to hit components on the board and the way this looks here it appears to have been planned that there was more uh, distance between the two uh, pieces of acrylic um, but there are no extra parts um, available to build that um, this is the first little shortcoming and I'm pretty sure I'm going to fix it by adding another another set of nuts onto these or, or something else. Um, it's quite funny that the spacers, there are three leftover spacers in there and three leftover spacers of the second size. So maybe I can rig something up for that. It's kind of weird. But apart from that, building this thing has just been perfect i mean nothing missing the the directions that you're getting um the manual it's it's all pretty much perfect um i'm quite impressed i really am um building the x1 was uh quite a lot of fun already uh but this thing is slightly better so here you have it i'm basically done building the printer. Uh, the last things that I did was uh, install the cable chains and all the wires and everything came pre-threaded. That was really nice. Uh, I did run into a few problems with these levels, with these end switches here. Um, there are some screws included with that that put up a bit of a fight. Uh, but you actually get like 10 spares and I broke about three of them just just trying to get six screws uh, into their holes. Well, everything is pretty cool. Everything is fine. Everything worked out super so far. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to get on with the wiring and well the wiring was already a problem on the x1 because the wiring <laughs> didn't even show up in the manual and um they did the same thing again all of the information for the wiring is one page one measly page in the manual that's it that is all you get for the wiring <laughs> where the wires are supposed to go and where you have to put them on the board. It doesn't tell you where you should put the where you should put the cable shroud and what's the best way to get rid of the cables and not have them touch anything. So that is kind of a, a kind of a letdown. Um, everything was really great up to now um, but the cabling Apparently they're not really sure how you're supposed to do it. Also the cables uh, seem to be short in places and extremely long in other places. So there will be quite a lot of cable, cable binding going on. Apart from that, I have to get it figured out and when I'm done, I suppose uh, we can actually turn it on. Uh, so far I've spent about four and a half to five hours on this. Um, I suppose somebody else might have been faster if we didn't have to operate a camera or talk about it. Um, but for a printer this size that's quite a good uh, time frame to build it. I just mounted the cable chain 
and um, it is pretty important that you make sure that it doesn't touch the upper beam um, before when it's all the way to the top because it can get um, locked in there and it's gonna exert a lot of force on the back side of the table and you don't want that so make sure that the chain has a little bit of um, distance to the top beam that's kind of the other thing that I really didn't like was the way the cable management is done that everything has to run right around here and that there's so much leftover cable that you now have to basically wrap together and store somewhere also the cable to this stepper um, has lots of excess wire while the one on the other side the, the wire is so short that I had to wire it or route it right around the frame and to this controller board and I had to take a file and remove some of the acrylic so I could get this cable through um, but otherwise that cable would have been too short which is um, not optimal but I guess you can live with that uh, the thing that really well that I really didn't like was the micro SD card that was included with the 3D printer did not work with the 3D printer so apparently it has a test print on it but I can't get the printer to accept that card so I had to use another one that I use with my other trunk C printer and that one works fine so I don't know what happened there um, but for somebody who's starting out and who's trying to do his first print that is quite annoying the only thing that I changed apart from that is this part up here uh, which makes it easier to get the belt management um, with all the uh, distances that it needs to run around the bearings but that's a really small change and you can print this file yourself and I'm gonna upload it to my repo where I keep all my 3d printed things so this is the first test print that I'm doing with the printer so far and I must say it is really good there's nothing huh, there's nothing that I can complain about which um, is unusual I didn't have any problems setting anything up leveling the the built plate wasn't too complicated I am quite amazed how silent the drive is because I would have thought it was louder uh, and I'm a little bit disappointed at how loud the power supply and the fan on the side of the controller board is because they're actually louder than than the motor assembly but hey this is nice this is really nice I also added the blue liner to the front beam um, which looks pretty nice um, and it is pretty close to the blue that I used for the build platform I am going to use the build tag that came along with it but I want to get a glass separator before I do that and uh, that might take some time to source that <laughs> 